Hey guys, Josh with the Epic Channel, and today what we're going to be discussing is the old King of the Road 3408 cap diesel engine. You may have heard of a 3408 and wonder what the heck is that thing? It's not something you see very often anymore, but they made them for quite a long time and they're very interesting engines. Now you might be wondering, is a 3408 and a 3406 related? Yes and no. Uh, they came out in very similar times and they do have some similarities, but they're very different fundamentally. A 3406, whether it's a B, a C, or an E model, is an inline six. A 3408, even though it's the same series of engine, is a V8 engine, and it's an eight cylinder. Well, V8, eight cylinder, I kind of repeat myself there, but it's got some really interesting design features about it too, some quirks. It's also the largest on-highway engine that Cat ever made, so, it's not only on highway, they put them in a lot of different machines, generators, marine applications, industrial, but an engine that deserves your respect and I think you'll find quite interesting. Let's learn a little bit about them. Okay, so let's go over some of the interesting design features of the 3408. It is, as I already mentioned, the largest, being both displacement and weight. It is 1,099 cubic inches, which gives us 18 liters of displacement. Now, CAT never made a C18 in an on-highway application, so this would make it the largest displacement-wise CAT on-highway diesel engine ever made. It's also the heaviest, coming in at a dry weight of about 3,300 pounds. Obviously, once you add coolant and oil accessories, it's going to weigh a lot more. 3406, in relation to that, a dry weight has about 2,800 pounds, give or take. So it's several hundred pounds heavier, which makes sense when you think it has two additional cylinders, it's got a wider block, it's got two cylinder heads, it's gonna have some extra girth to it. Now, how does it get that 18 liters? Well, eight cylinders, they are a 5.4 inch bore and a six inch stroke. Now, 5.4 inch bore, if you're familiar with cat engines, that is the same exact bore as the 3406, B, C, or E, and the C15. Now, Cat did make a C16, and they made a big bore, 3406E, and then the C18, but those are not 5.4 inch bore. Those are either 5.5 or 5.7 inch bore, but the 3408 and the 3406 share the same bore, which is pretty interesting. Now, they don't share the same stroke. Usually, an inline six has a longer stroke than a V8 for various reasons, but one other interesting thing about the block design on this is most V8s are a 90 degree V8, meaning the cylinder banks are at 90 degrees opposed to each other. This is not a 90 degree V8, this is a 65 degree V8 engine, which means the cylinders, instead of being at a 90 degree angle, are closer together. Now that would create problems in an engine with balance because you want them at 90 degrees when they're firing. With a 65 degree, you get a closer angle which gives you a less wide engine. However, that could create balance problems. So how would you counteract that? Well, the genius is a cat behind these engines came up with an idea. They said, what if we move the crank journals? You might be saying, well, they're moving all the time. That's not what I mean. On a normal inline six, you have a uh, journal for your rod bearing and a journal for your main bearing. The rod bearings on an inline six go to a single rod journal on the crankshaft. On a V8, usually they're next to each other. So you have one bank, whether it's one and two, if you're uh, like this, or if you're Ford, it might be one and five or whatever. Anyway, both rods are usually bolted right next to each other on the same journal. Cat didn't do that though they actually offset the rod journals on the crankshaft. So you get a really, really weird looking crankshaft with the rod journals, and I'll show you a picture here obviously, but look at that. Now, why would they do that? Well, remember, it's a 65 degree V. So if you move the rod journals, even though the cylinder banks are at a different angle, you're changing the geometry of how it fires, and even though it's a 65 degree angle V, it's now acting like a 90 degree V, so you get a lot better balance with the engine. At least that's the research I could do. Why the heck they made the crank look like that? 
Now we had discussed the bore being a 5.4 inch bore. What is interesting is some of the liners fit from the 3406 to the 3408. At least doing the research here, I typed the part number in for them. And yeah, they're actually the same liner. So that's interesting. Now I've never had to cut counter bores on a 3408, but since they use the same liner, I'm assuming, you know what they say about assuming, but the counter bore process would be the same if needed. And then the liner shim process would be the same. I'm assuming, like I said, I haven't had to do a 3408. I've only seen a couple of these engines in my career. And, you know, I haven't been working on them since they were new, which actually they came out in 1975, which looking at the calendar today, 50 years ago today. Now, an interesting thing, 3406E, or well, not E, 3406 came out in 1973 or premiered then. So that is actually 52 years old. So probably almost all the same guys working on the 3408. Also, we're working on the 3406. Now, Cat also had another V8, it's much smaller than the 3208, which I already have videos on, but much different animal than the 3408. Now, getting away from the basics of the engine, what about the fuel system, turbocharger, water pump, all that stuff? Well, a lot of the same designs as the 3406 here. We have a gear-driven oil pump. It's got an oil cooler. These could be either pre-combustion chamber or direct injection fuel systems. They never had an electronic 3408, at least not in truck applications. So that means the camshaft, which was, was a single camshaft push rod engine with rocker arms. It had four valves per cylinder head and used basically the same valve geometry as the 3406. It had a valve bridge, which the pictures I saw was actually the adjustable style with the dowel between the valves. I don't know if they ever made a floating valve bridge design. My guess would be they did since the 3406 came with both different designs. And these, there was a 3408 and then the 3408B in the truck applications, but they both had the same serial number prefix, which was a 28V as in Victor. Now these could range from 400 to 450 horsepower and they made, that's pretty good power at the time. You have to remember the 346B only made 425 horsepower. You wouldn't get more than that in any cat on highway application until you got to the 346s with the peak engines, which not the best in my opinion. Now the 3408 never came with jake or compression brakes. And in an on-highway application, obviously, that's a problem. 3406s, you could get jakes. But this engine, instead of having jakes, premiered with something called the brake saver. Now, I've got other video talking about the brake saver, but the answer to do the Jacobs compression brake from CAT was a, an oil-fed, it's kind of like a reverse torque converter, but basically, it's an engine retarder that goes between the engine and the transmission to slow down the drivetrain and it's oil fed so now this brake saver could also be had in the 3406 and later the c15 but at the time since there weren't jake brakes you could get the brake saver with the 3408 and the brake saver is actually a very good engine retarder it'll slow down a truck quite well it is quite an expensive unit since it has a larger oil pump a larger oil cooler oil lines, the oil pan's different. You've got this large torque converter-like system that's between the engine and the transmission. Basically, it's bolted to the flywheel, but, and that will slow down the, the engine, but slow down the drivetrain in place of the Jake brakes. Very interesting design if you've ever seen one. Now we've been talking about these engines quite a bit. Let's do a little section I like to call destruction of the week. This week's Destruction of the Week, I recorded this, but comes from Powell Enterprises over there in Priest River. And I was out here fixing some counter boards. You could see someone had previously cut these at 34 on one side and 31 on one side. I don't know what the heck was going on. Got them cleaned up though, but they had disassembled these cylinder packs, which are new packs, to install them. And Kirk over there found a problem with number four. Now these were cat cylinder packs and they come assembled of course, but he took them out to test the liner protrusion. Luckily, 
And if you look at number five, look at the oil control ring. Looks normal, right? Look at number four. It's missing about a third of the oil control ring. It was not in the cylinder packet. It wasn't in the bag or anything. So someone at CAT literally put this together like that and then it was sold. Not on the dealership for this, but glad they found it. That's a scary one. Now what else? We could have a pre-combustion on the earlier engine or direct injection. It was a high pressure fuel pump system, just like pretty much all diesel engines at the time. It was ran off the front gear train. It had a timing advance unit in the drive gear, similar to the 3406B. It was a hydromechanical governor, and it was a turbocharger, single turbocharger that sat on the rear over the bell housing, and there was an after-cooled version of that also. Now, just like the 3406s, now this is coming from John Goldsmith here, they had problems with, most engines can have these problems, but broken exhaust fasteners, exhaust leaks. So there was a fix, according to John Goldsmith, where you would drill out the exhaust studs and put instead of a 3 8 a 7 16 exhaust stud which would be interesting if the 3406 used that i wonder why they didn't go with a 7 16 stud they probably have a lot less exhaust fastener failures over time if they would have gone with a much larger exhaust fastener but that was a fix for exhaust problems on those now this engine being heavier being non-electronic making a lot of power, being a 18 liter engine, was not known for good fuel economy, folks. It made good power for the time, but it got generally between four and five miles to the gallon. Not the best. Of course, fuel was cheaper at the time, but cats in general, not known for their good fuel economy, would make your C15 getting, you know, five and a half look pretty good if you were getting only four with one of these, but these are pretty cool engines. Now we talked a lot about the engines themselves. Why, why did they kind of go out of phase? You don't see them anymore. You see quite a few 346Bs and Cs running around there still, but not the 3408. Well, the fuel economy for one thing wasn't the best. Cat on the B models starting getting close to the horsepower requirements of the 3408. With a 425 horsepower 3406, if you've got a 450 horsepower 3408, and the 3408 costs a lot more to produce. Is that 25 horsepower really worth it? Especially with the added weight. You have to think an inline six has a single cylinder head. Six cylinder. So an eight liter, or an eight liter, an eight cylinder has two more cylinders, two cylinder heads. So it's going to be a lot more expensive to produce and it's heavier. Over time, it just didn't make sense to have. Not only that, the 3406 later in its life you could get it with jake brakes you could also have a brake saver on it too so you could even have a unit with a brake saver and jake brakes you couldn't have jacob's brakes on a 3408 so i think this was an engine that while really cool and still out there in fact you'll find them in generators marine applications all sorts of stuff still it just didn't make enough power for its displacement. Now, of course, CAT could have stuck with it as an option. Of course, at the time, you could get a Detroit, a Cummins, whatever, a CAT. So for CAT to have two engines competing against themselves maybe didn't make the most sense. But they could have made a 3408E, electronic version, got rid of the fuel pump. Maybe it would have made 700 horsepower or something. I, I don't know. I don't know. If Eaton would make a transmission that would fit behind that, they do have a 2000 torque transmission, but maybe it would have made sense to have a heavy haul version, the 3408E heavy haul version. Of course, you would have had to have compression brakes with it at that time, and maybe they could have made a compression brake or a brake saver version. But, you know, I wasn't in the meetings, but for whatever reason, Cat decided, you know, let's just focus on the 3406, which of course then became the C15. So these are cool engines. They're still out there. You don't see them every day, though. And, uh, you know, I, it's something that I learned a little bit about while researching on them. And, you know, if you ever come across one, maybe you'll find it interesting. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.